I'm going to do a little workshop on how to get clients without chasing people. There's two groups of people, right? One group of people are, are salespeople. They sell stuff. They naturally have that ability to, you know, they, they've got the, the ability to gab and the charisma and they can just do that thing. They can just get right into it and it's like a natural conversation. Hint, hint, because it is. The other group of people think that there's something separate between regular conversations and what we call this sales conversation. A lot of people kind of get fucked up by this. Here's, here's the deal. Not chasing clients. Getting clients to want you, need you, love you, can't live without you, and chase you. Kind of like you're a magnet versus trying to push rope. You ever tried to push rope? I don't like pushing rope. I don't like trying to push string. It's really hard to get it to go anywhere. I also don't like pulling string because I don't like dragging people through a sales process. The right way to do it, in my opinion, is to attract the right kind of clients, meaning you don't have to chase them. I was in sales, high level sales, selling homes um, in real estate and then business to business finance like like high-end stuff, six-figure, seven-figure deals on a regular basis. I did that for a little over 10 years. And the first half of that 15-year process, um, I learned how to mind fuck people into what it is that I wanted, them to fucking close and buy the thing and me get paid. The problem with that is if you do that, you create ill will right? Buyer's remorse about the fucking thing. It was amazing. I absolutely loved the process or I didn't, but now I've got this thing and fuck, I don't really need it or want it or whatever, but I'm stuck with it. That's one thing. The other piece of that though is, is most of us have a business where we could do ongoing business with that client, right? The problem with my process, while it was really fucking amazing for making money, it sucked for all the headache that it caused me after the fact. Meaning I could lead somebody by their nose through a process and if they stayed on the phone, they bought the fucking thing. But then now I've got a client and oh, by the way, even though a really good salesperson can manufacture the no like and trust factor that a sales transactions based on, I fucking didn't like them after the fact. Then we come up to like 2016, I decide that I want out of the sales game altogether. I end up buying a course on the internet and through having conversations with people in those groups, what I start hearing is I'm asking them questions about the thing we're learning. They're asking me questions or telling me about what's going on. Man, I talked to this guy and, and he didn't sign up with me. I had the sales conversation and, and I totally thought it was in the bag and the guy was like, no, I'm, I'm good or I need to think about it or I didn't realize he had to ask his dog or whatever that situation was. And over about two or three week period of time, this kept coming up and coming up. And that's the thing I know about. So I'm like, okay, tell me, tell me what happened. What'd you say? What'd he say? How'd the conversation go? And all of a sudden, I've got a handful of people who don't know each other all within the same two or three days saying, dude, you need to teach this. And the first thing I said was, the fuck I do, I don't have any interest in teaching people how to do sales. I said all that to say this, sales conversations and prospecting and bringing clients into your world is no different than how you would build personal relationships. Here's the difference. The actual building of the relationship and, and going out and like meeting them and approaching somebody and all that is exactly the same. The difference is in a sales relationship, business relationship, they pay you to be in that relationship. Personal relationships, they don't with money anyways. Most people that are in the second camp of they don't want to or don't know how to have a sales conversation, make a couple of these mistakes. The first step is they think they need to be something different. They need to say certain things. They need to have certain word bites. They need to do certain tactics, close people. Not the case. It's just not. If you want to go sell Rolls Royce and Learjets and like, you know, 
hundreds of thousands of acres worth of property and hotels and, you know, like seriously, like eight, nine figure things, then by all means, go actually learn how to be a salesperson. It's a longer process than you think. There's no fucking shortcuts. There's no easy buttons. There's no fairy dust. There's no unicorn farts. Here's the deal. Really highly trained professional salespeople have the ability because they've learned a skill set to manufacture no like and trust. Sales transactions are built on rapport and relatability, which come from the ability to know, like, and trust. That's just how it works. Highly trained sales professionals, whether they've gone through extensive training or they've really studied the dark arts of, you know, NLP and persuasion tactics and language patterning and modeling and all of that shit that you don't need to know. It's all fucking techno babble. They've learned how to chameleon somebody in such a way that they can extrapolate information without the person being any wiser. And then they use that information they got out of them against that person and make them do what they want. I did that. I then decided to figure out a different way to do this. What I found was that by being myself, oh, guess what? If I'm myself, some people aren't going to like me. Oh no, what am I going to do? It's actually a good thing. If you are completely yourself and you're doing the thing where you're interacting with other human beings, some of them aren't going to like you, which means by default, some of them are going to like you. Well, if they like you, that means that to an extent, lesser or greater, they have the ability to relate to you. If they naturally relate to you, guess what? You don't have to do anything or be anything different than what you actually really are. My three famous questions. It's Sunday afternoon. You're at grandma's house, right? The whole family's there. Dining room table, there's like three leaves in it and a card table and there's like 18 people. Sunday afternoon, dinner at grandma's. So knock at the door. Okay. So being the 35 year old man that I am, I get up and go answer the door. You've been there. You open the door and there's some guy standing there. He's got a clipboard and a badge and you're like, Motherfucker. right? There's a sign on the door that says no soliciting, but that's in gorilla ease. He can't read it. No idea what it means. Super nice guy, great big grin. And he goes right into this pitch about the fucking roof that you need because he can see through grandma's roof. And the neighbors up the street love them and blah, blah, blah. Do you enjoy that when that happens? Second question, everybody's got a smartphone. Some of us have a couple of them, right? You look down and the phone's ringing and you don't recognize the number and it's not local. And you're like, who the fuck is this? But you go ahead and answer it. You can't even get hello out of your mouth before the person on the other end of the phone jumps right into this long ass tirade. Their voice is raised, right? You can't get a word in edgewise. They're trying to say something that you can't use. Like, you know, grandma passed away and I'm going to be out of town for a month and this thing that's coming up next week and I can't even go to. So, and like they don't take no and they just keep going, going, going. My question is, do you enjoy it when that happens? Okay. So the third part of this is we're all on Facebook, right? This is like the, the new frontier for the people trying to sell shit, right? It's amazing if you know how to do it the right way. I get probably two or three people a week that will friend me and either like 2.3 seconds after I accept a friend request, they jump right into this, dude, we need to blah, 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 and you should blah, 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 and this and that and the other and my thing and this and blah. Or they wait a couple of days because they've gotten a little bit smarter about doing it. You know, you forgot that you added them and it's been a couple of days, maybe even a week or two and you get this sly message and it's like, Hey man, how you doing? Right. And they go into this weird thing and it's like running around in circles. And if you know what you're doing with sales, especially really like the psychological mind fuck warfare stuff that some of us know how to do, you're like, really guy. My question is when that happens to you, when people cold approach you on social media, do you enjoy it? If you can't cold approach people with your message that they're not at the right place in the right time to hear and you've got something to sell 
and you want people to buy it, but if you don't tell them about it, how the fuck are they going to know about it? How do you do that? So there's two ways to do this. We have the internet. The tech is so low barrier to be able to get on and use that everybody with the ability to form a sentence, whether they've got what, whether they've got grammar or not is trying to sell everybody something. This goes back to my first point. No like, and trust are the basis for a sales transaction to happen. And no like, and trust are built on the ability to naturally relate to somebody. Now, like this guy who was the most recent to reach out to me on Facebook and like try to pitch me his thing and took like 30 minutes of my time. And while he's probably a really nice guy and he's got a mentor who does this and that and makes millions and whatever, you know, he like whipped it out and told me how big it was. He didn't even take the time to look into me at all to determine if there's anything that he and I might be able to relate on. See where I'm going with this? This is the cold approach way to get your message out to the right people without having to chase them. First, you got to know who the fuck you are. Sounds simple, right? There's more to it than that. I'm not going to go into the details here. Second, you need to know how you operate, meaning all of your little quirks and your little personality traits and your characteristic traits and all the weird things about you. Third, you need to know what you actually want from yourself, from your life, from the fucking people that you're trying to serve. Hopefully you're not just trying to sell shit and you're trying to serve them. Then you take that and you go, okay, cool. Since I'm a weirdo in these three ways and I'm kind of like that and generally this is the kind of person I am, that means that I would naturally relate to people who are like this and this and this. Okay, so if I'm going to naturally relate to people that like cars and they like the outdoors and camping and for land and like reptiles, or food, or permaculture, or mindset. I can go into a bunch of different things, right? I'm going to find people who I could naturally normally carry on a conversation with that has nothing to do with the thing that I'm trying to sell and find people to buy. Then I'm going to reach out to those people. I'm going to gently become visible in their world, which means I'm going to send them a friend request. When they respond, and they accept my friend request, I'm going to wave at them with the little thing that Facebook allows you to do, or I'm going to say, hey, Bobby, I really dig what you're doing. I read through a couple of things on your, on your wall. I, I dig the message, man. Just wanted to say, hey, looks like we might be, you know, have some things in common. Have a great day. No need to respond, right? Thanks, Ben, for reminding me you want to make sure that you don't make them feel obligated and you're just saying, Hey, what's up? I think we've got some shit in common. Cool. And then you drop it. Most people are going to respond anyways, even though you said, don't feel obligated to respond. I'm just, I'm just saying hi, right? Most people are going to respond back and they're probably going to say, Hey man, thanks very much. Lan and I appreciate that. I looked at a couple of things on, on your wall and yeah, it looks like we've got this and this and that in common. Da, 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 da. Cool. Right on. Thanks for reaching out. And then maybe a couple of days go by and you happen to think about them. And so you go back to their personal wall and you happen to see an article about neuroscience, whatever, this and that and whatever. And you are interested in that topic, right? And so you put a little short comment on there not full on stalking, but you're just gently letting them know that you're paying attention, right? The shit in their world is interesting to you too. Slowly over the course of a couple of weeks, you continue doing that and you're going to be able to determine if they have any interest in relating to you and if you have any interest in relating to them. That's how this works. It's building relationships, you're opening relationships right? There's no need to chase anybody. Invariably, if you do this with a hundred people over the course of two or three months that are in areas of your life that you could naturally relate to, 20 or 30 of them are going to strike up conversations with you. You're never even going to have to mention the thing that you do. And all of a sudden they're going to ask, Hey, I saw this and that and the other. What is that? What do you do? How does that work? Hey, I saw that you did this thing and you posted this this, this post, 
we do X, Y, Z. Could you do that for us? How's that work? What's it look like? What's that cost? That's the key. You don't bring up your shit, but you take the time and put in a little effort to go out and look for people that would naturally relate to you outside of business. Now, if you're a salesperson, if you're a full on highly trained sales professional, you can manufacture no like and trust with anybody you like. You know as well as I do that it's a skill set and once you've got it, it's kind of like riding a bike. You just got to, you know, practice every once in a while. Getting clients without chasing people. Don't push string. Don't pull on string. Be a magnet. You can be a unicorn. You can be a snowflake. You can be unique and you can totally be an individual. And guess what? I don't care what anybody says about that. Don't use it as a crutch, but it's a fucking fact. There's not one other person on this planet that's like you just like you. Only you can be exactly who you are. There's a bunch of people on this planet that would totally relate to you. And out of that bunch of people that would totally relate to you, a big handful of them, probably more than you could ever possibly service as clients, would totally want you to do that thing that you do for them. All the rest of the people, the other 98.2% of the entire population on the planet, they don't want it, they don't need it, and they don't like you. Like, really like you. So my question is, if you're chasing clients, do you think if you stopped chasing that 98.2% of the population out there, you'd have less headache? This whole getting client thing is a lot like dating. It's a lot like meeting somebody at a barbecue at a friend's house, and you're like, wow. Hmm. How about that? Right? You've got two options. You can go blow that fucking situation up and never get an opportunity to find out how cool that really could be. Or you could not be a sales jerk and not blow that situation up. You get a pick. Now there's a lot of suave and, and psychological warfare ways to do that. Right? And not be yourself and all of that, that doing that to get your way leads to three months down the road when the fucking shampoo's not in the right place and somebody loses their goddamn mind and the other person's chasing them around the house with a knife. You've been in a relationship like that? Yeah. Right? You've been in client relationships like that? Oh, it's fucking amazing to begin with. They pay. You start doing the thing. Everybody's all excited. And then all of a sudden, the little irritations start to pop up. More irritations. Pretty soon, it's like fucking constant nonsense. Been in a business relationship like that? Me too. That's caused from not being yourself completely from the get-go. Peace out, Cub Scouts.